Flashpoint, the final season continues. Tonight at 10, 9 central. And watch CTV's Flashpoint on the go with Bell Mobile TV on Bell Superphones, smartphones, and tablets. CTV News Channel, a division of Bell Media. Welcome back. A television news anchor is being admired by many for her response to a viewer's email that criticized her weight. Rather than ignore the email, Jennifer Livingston, who works in Wisconsin, went on air and called the viewer a bully. Have a listen. To all of the children out there who feel lost, who are struggling with your weight, with the color of your skin, your sexual preference, your disability, even the acne on your face, listen to me right now. Do not let your self-worth be defined by bullies. Learn from my experience that the cruel words of one are nothing compared to the shouts of many. Hmm. So this video getting quite the reaction. Uh, for more reaction to the story, we have our pop culture panel joining us in Toronto, Scott Fox. He's a morning host on Z103.5. And joining us in studio, comedian and writer with the Torontoist, Jeremy Woodcock is with us. Hey, guys. Morning, how are you? I'm good. What do you make of this news anchor? I mean, the video of it's uh, received two million hits on YouTube. Uh, she's all over the talk show circuit. Uh, Scott? You know, I think she handled it brilliantly. And it is about bullying. It's so easy with the internet and social media to bully the media. You can make basically an anonymous complaint. And the way she handled it, I thought was awesome. You know, Females in broadcasting in particular tend to take the brunt of it for issues like their appearance. And I think the fact that she confronted it head on, read the complaint and gave somebody some insight into what she deals with was awesome. And you know what? Kudos to her. She handled it perfectly. Yeah. What do you guys call yourself uh, Z instead of Z? Uh, it rhymes with 103. <laughs> <laughs> just thought I'd take a little shot right there just we to get touch the water. All the time. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy, what do you think? I mean, was she smart to do this? I um, think she was because bullying, if that's, if that's what it is, has changed in the sort of internet age. I, I read an editorial this morning where they said uh, she shouldn't have brought it out because he gave it as a private letter to her. Mm -hmm. So she wasn't bullying him, mm -hmm. or he wasn't bullying her. But really, that's the way you can do it now with private texts and things, and that's you bully someone privately. She took the step to bring it to let other people who disagree. Uh, bring it into the debate. Oh, is what she did so amazing that, you know, she warrants all these appearances on the talk show, warrants all these people viewing the video? Uh, I think it's the people viewing the video that leads to the talk show. That yeah, 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 the, right. But uh, I, I just, she made it personal, uh, which you don't often see for, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. It's a good question. Scott, I mean, obviously she's doing well by it, but a lot of people might say, look, you know, you are on TV. You're not really inspiring the rest uh, of the country to be fit, to eat right, I assuming people out there can control their weight, or is that part of the issue here? That, you know, the person that sent this email was fairly ignorant of what this woman's individual circumstances were. Is that even a factor? Should it be a factor? I don't think so. I mean, she is who she is, she does what she does, and for this person to send in a letter like that, I think it was kind of inspiring for her to read that letter so people can see what sort of complaints she gets and so that she can put it out there and say, listen, this is who I am and I'm proud of myself. Okay. Have you guys ever seen the show Honey Boo Boo? I have. It's it's good. It, you know, it's a guilty pleasure. I okay. like it. Can I just say, I recently saw some of it um, and I was aghast. I thought, you know, this is not fair. I almost thought, like, this is a family that's sort of being exploited because their lives are, are pretty sad. I mean, that was my individual take on it. South Park, though, is now making fun of this show. Here's what they've done. Honey Boo Boo is going to do pageants with a pig heart. We want to pick a hog that has pizzazz and knows how to work it, girl. I want that one. This one here? You want this one? Yeah, no, wait. That pig over there gave me the evil eye. I want that one. I want that one. Okay, is this funny or is this sort of exploiting people who are maybe not living in the best circumstances? I don't know. Scott, am I too kind-hearted here? Is this pretty funny stuff? Atypical South Park. That's what South Park does. And they tapped into a, a pretty topical thing when they did that. And as far as Honey Boo Boo's concerned, I think that hits close to home for a lot of Southern American families. So it's hot right now. South Park did a good thing by spoofing it. Jeremy, have you seen this show? I have. I could. Do you laugh when you watch it? Do you kind of go, ah, South I don't know. South Park in general or this episode? What, oh, no, not South Park. No, Honey I, yeah. Boo Boo. This one I can take offense as a comedian. I think uh, ah. it's like if I said I was going to make a parody of the movie Airplane. Yeah. It's already there. Like whatever you're going to do, even if it is exploitative, the show, it's as far as you can take it. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
the fact that it's on the learning channel is also interesting, but the fact that they're parodying something that they, they couldn't really take it much further, I thought. But Honey Boo Boo, is that comedy gold as, soon, as far as you're concerned? Uh, not as... Because it's a family who, you know, takes this young girl around to pageants and the life, you know, this family revolves around uh, putting on makeup, mm -hmm. winning awards, uh, in intermixed with some, you know, time, downtime, playing bingo mm -hmm. in a small town. Is that mm -hmm. funny stuff or is it kind of... Uh, not when you see her drinking Red Bulls to strut <laughs> around at age of six on the stage. I haven't seen or, that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's talk about, speaking of drinks, mm -hmm. you heard about this latest drink uh, in Germany. So uh, it's G Spirits is what it's called, limited edition line of spirits. And what they do is they say the taste is slightly different because they pour it over the breasts of naked models. I don't know. Is this something we all want to sign up for? <laughs> Scott. Uh, you know, I can't say that I would definitely line up to try it. But again, it's a brilliant concept. Is and it? I don't know. <laughs> it's something it? totally different. And, and you know what? I mean, the some picture... Might say, it's God. Some people might say this is a little desperate. Come on. You couldn't come up with a better marketing campaign. So this is what you, you got going on here. Okay, so when you get a bottle of this, which I suspect will probably be popular for bottle service in clubs, for example, yeah. you get to see the model whose breasts you're drinking from. So it's almost like you have a <laughs> special relationship with that woman. Oh, you know, I, so I'm thinking the people that might drink this are kind of a sad crowd, mm -hmm. Jeremy. Uh, I don't know. First of all, I never thought I'd see something that made the five-second rule sound classy. But uh, <laughs> I, think, I think the fact that this advertising is always stretched, it's never quite accurate, so I think... The fact that you're seeing these models, I think it's probably slightly accurate. There's probably a Russian hand model named Igor scooping your vodka, and it's probably stretching the truth a little bit. I don't think, uh, it doesn't sound hygienic to me. Does it sound part. hygienic, Scott? Is that going to stop you? Well, from from, as I understand it, they do have quality control people on standby to make sure that the alcohol does touch the model and it's sanitarily poured into the mm. bottle. Yeah, we'll, we'll need inspectors for that, don't you think? Absolutely, and we all know that inspectors never make mistakes. Okay, I want to thank you both. Scott Fox <laughs> is a morning host on, what's, what's the station? Z1035. Okay, good, uh, good of you to join us. And also comedian and writer with the Torontoist, Jeremy Woodcock, joining us in the studio. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Uh, coming up the program, the gift of hearing. A woman in B.C. now able to hear thanks to a remarkable procedure and how this changes her life. That is just ahead.